and welcome to this training and coaching with WKO, lesson three, establishing your training targets. Today we're going to talk about establishing your training targets. If you remember in the last presentation in lesson two, I said you can really, lesson two, three, and four are really steps, two, three, and four. You can change those around order that works best for you. Um, let's talk a little bit about training targets and this idea of training zones. Um, when most of us got into power training, we very early established the fact that there are some classic training zones out there. This is that, uh, you know, the Coggin classic training zones on the screen. Uh, these are excellent descriptive training levels. And basically what it's doing, it's taking the measurement of your threshold or your FT, your functional threshold power or FTP, and then using a percentage-based system, a percentage of that threshold power to establish generalized training targets, training levels, training zones. And then it's applying, you know, some generalized time frame to that. The challenge here a little bit is that entire system is based off one physiological anchor, your threshold or your FTP. Now, when we take a look at that over time, we understand that when you generalize rules, you tend to make a bell curve of response. So the challenge that we see in the generalized approach is that the general functional rules really only apply to about, I don't know, half the universe, 50% of the people fit within the generalized rules. And therefore something like a classic um, training approach or classic training zones approach works just fine. But you also need to think about you know, as the rider has individualization, right, and they begin to train differently, or I shouldn't say that the rider is different, and then they begin to train different, people don't fit within those neat little packages. Um, you know, a rider can have, a, oops, a rider can have a, a range of different fitnesses. If I'm working something as a track event versus I then a year later, I'm working on a stage race, I, my fitness is going to change the same application of training levels. One, it might not fit me as an individual. And then two, as I train in highly specific ways, might not fit me uh, in a specific or a training specificity way. So the classic approach is good and solid. It was excellent for the time it was introduced. But now because we have better technology, we have better ways of doing it. But let's take a little deeper look at the challenge of the generalized rule. So this is just a quick comparison of Jane Ryder versus Joe Ryder. And here you see the power duration curve of Jane and the power duration curve of Joe. They look similar but different. These two athletes have an FTP within five watts of each other. And there's a little different going on there. What you're seeing, right, though, in general is these two athletes have been scaled to the same scale. We see that, or to the, I'm sorry, to an adjusting scale. So Jane is on a range of up to 600, and Joe is on a range a little above 1300. So the reality is when we put them on the same scale, we fix the axis, this area here, this is what they really look like. And that's one of the problems sometimes with charting. You have to, you know, what could look similar isn't always similar. Now we look at Jane and Joe Ryder, and here's Jane and here's Joe. But the reality is these two athletes based on the classic system, and this is so important for people getting into WKO and evolving their training for, to them on, for you to understand, these two athletes are training at the same targets. And the reality is they should not be. Um, they are definitely making energy power in two different ways. So the reality is if you measured it just off their threshold, which is in five watts and utilize this system, Jane and Joe would be not only training under the same power targets, but the same time targets to produce results. There would be no individualization of those two athletes, which you can quickly see are different. This is why we came up in WKL4. We've started the process and continue to evolve it in WKL5 with eye levels and optimized intervals. We needed a better solution. And so we started out with the theory of we needed to solve the issue of generalization of power description and time suggestions. What I've just been talking about is the challenge. We also needed a system to be specific to the energy systems being emphasized or developed in training or specified in training. And finally, we actually needed a system that evolved and changed 
with the athlete's fitness or as their fitness has evolved and changed both up and down, right? We always hope it's up, but the reality is it would want to track with that athlete in a more automated fashion. And that's why we created eye levels and optimized intervals. Now, what is an eye level? Well, an optimized interval, it starts by understanding it's a paradigm change. And the paradigm changes, we move from the classic system of using a single point of information or data to, re to relate training levels and targets to using all points, using the entire curve. And this is what we call a power duration solution. And basically it's based off all points of data. We know within the model that certain points have more influence. These points are intersections of time and intensity, kind of laying this out by the arrows here. Um, they're not specific, it's just meant to be a visual um, understanding cue. Um, but the reality is in the model, we can tease these points out by the desired physiological strain, what you're trying to put the athlete under, and that drives the development or that drives the application known as eye levels and optimized intervals, actually. Now, one of the things when we look at eye levels is when we looked at tons of them, there really isn't that much variation, uh, you know, let's call it at 10 minutes and, and beyond, 15 minutes and out and beyond, you know, you kind of have this range here, it depends on how you would say it. So this is as a, this is variation as a percentage above FTP. But when you get into the short, man, we see a lot of variations. Each one of these little lines is an athlete, right? So we see massive variations here that your classic zones are not taking into account, but there really isn't too much variation once we kind of get into the more aerobic and easier type of training zones. So that means we're able to use all the data in the power profile, or I'm sorry, the power duration curve to produce eye levels. Now let's make sure that you can find your training zones dashboard. It should be in your basic and advanced views, but if you don't have it for some reason, all you need to do is click on the simple down arrow, add an existing dashboard, search for zones, and you'll get a whole list of different training zones to bring up. Just bring up that dashboard. Remember the dashboard will be added to the view that you are using, and that view, any athlete sharing that view will now have that dashboard. Once we get that up, you can actually take a look at the classic and the eye levels in there. So I've kind of gone back to, this is Rider 1, this was Joe Rider in the example. And here's their classic zones. And you see that they have the same kind of targets, but they only have percentages here. Where once we get above threshold, right, we have a whole bunch more specific zones. You notice that the numbers here, everything above 290 is anaerobic capacity. Here, we start looking at all the higher specificity of the zones above. For you, those of you that are normalized power busters and other stuff, this is really beneficial to you. Same view for Rider 2, that actually the first one was Jane, this is Joe. Um, we see those extra numbers. The key thing is now when we compare them, now you notice they were under the classic system, they were training at all training levels the same. Now look what happens when you individualize some of their above training levels. We definitely see them training at some different numbers. You know, you see a real shift in the power targets and now we're supplying time, you know, more specific time-based targets. It's just a more individualized way of targeting your training. Now that we have eye levels, which can be found in that power profile chart, take a look at yours and understand, and it's really great to compare against classic, what I was just doing. Compare your classic zones against your eye levels. If you fit in the bell curve, they're probably not all that much different. If you're unique based on your physiology or your current fitness, they might be different. I would highly recommend you simply follow eye levels as a basic starting point. Now, once we have eye levels and we've made them more individualized as the description, we still needed to give you a better prescription. Like, man, if I really wanted to specifically target something, what would I do? Well, in that same uh, training zones profile dashboard is your optimized intervals. Optimized intervals are a system where we're taking those points of impact on your power duration curve, those little crossover points that I was pointing out, we understand that certain efforts, we, the model understands, I should say, that certain efforts have 
uh, the highest impact on your energy system. And what we're doing in Optimize Interval is we're teasing those impact points out. So we're giving you a highly specific time and power target range to target that if you want to create a high specificity in your training, you have reasons to do so. And, you know, and I'm talking about training, like I need to improve a some muscular metabolic fitness. I need to improve in its simplest way of saying it, an energy system. And always remember all energy systems are always working together. When I say that, uh, it's an oversimplification, but yet it's not in the sense of targeting your training. So if I wanna target my training towards a specific response or a specific improved capability of my energy system, I would use optimized intervals. Now, one note about optimized intervals the left-hand side is model-derived results. So this is the math, right? This is the model predicting. The right-hand side is suggested time ranges of work. This was created by Dean Golich and myself and a couple of other um, uh, people really looking at what would be the best guidance to a self-coach athlete or new coach. I think you really, it's more important that you progress. So when you look at the targets, right? And that's why I call them reps estimated progressive. If you're going to do Pmax FRC work, you should probably do four to ten. Um, your time and zone estimates is you want about you know you don't want to go too much of that time and zone. You don't need a ton of these, and your recovery time in between should be pretty full. So let's take like an FRC interval here. Let's look at a full one minute type of interval. Um, actually, let's look at a max aerobic. Here's an athlete that's probably more of a sprinter, a pursuiter, has good anaerobic capacity. So the model suggesting they do longer max aerobic, what you might classically call VO2 max kind of work. It's presenting a target. It's suggesting three, we suggest three to eight reps, a total of 12 to 30 minutes within that time and zone. So if you did seven or you did four times six minutes, what would you be? Or six and a half minutes, about 25 minutes. So you might do three of those with a one-to-one -one ratio um, as a general rest target. The thing is you wanna progress that. So maybe you do three the first time, and then after doing three once or twice, you can do four. That's what we mean by progressive and targeting of your optimized intervals. Now there is another system of targeting. Uh, I, I tend to, and when I mentor coaches and other things, you learn early that you're training by zones and levels, right? But the reality is that's an excellent communication system. So you can prescribe zones and levels to your athletes. They can easily follow zones and levels. But over time, you learn that, that it's limited, that uh, there's a higher specificity. I did put an advanced, it says WKO Advanced Interval Targeting um, View in WKO 5. There's actually a supporting webinar that I did in WKO 4 on that that I can link. And the reality is, right, when you get very specific at targeting, history is really your greatest indicator. The model is, you know, your history. It's based off what you've done. So the ability to target intervals off points in models, really, or in the model, is one of the most accurate ways. So if you wanted to go out and target three-minute intervals, I look at the model. And I use what's known as a curve under the curve. You could see it. I probably had to get it probably could have given you better blowups, right? And this is a range, a percentage range under the curve. Most people can uh, reproduce repeated efforts about 90 to 92%, 88 to 93%. You know, you have to find your athlete's capability. But I usually start with a new athlete targeting 90% of their power duration target. And I look at their re repetition, how well they can repeat that and their perceived exertion, how hard it was. So I use the model to set the general target, 90% of their modeled three minute effort. Let's say that's 400 watts. Um, so let's say their three minute effort is 400 watts. I'm gonna target repeats at 90%, which would be 360 watts. This will help you do it, the curve under the curve. If you take a look at that dashboard, it'll probably you know, uh, clarify what I just said. And then I'll prescribe the right number at 360 watts. Maybe I want this athlete to do six times three or seven times three. Um, if they can do that and it, they've accomplished it without, you know, reducing power and fading or anything like that, um, I might up that to eight times three next time and a little bit more power. 
And then you'll quickly find that your athlete is pretty good at 90%. They're pretty good at 92%. Once you find the pattern, it's actually pretty predictable. And it tends to be about 90 to 92% is where I find 90% of the athletes fall within. Excellent. Please join us for our next lesson four, designing your training strategy with WKO.